Let's make a podcast. We are going to have a podcast today. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. That went too, a little too hard. I'm trying to have a lot of energy. Since I have none. You have none. I'm like, kind of like, I'm going to just carry us, carry this podcast uh-huh. through. Okay. Yes. I'm a little under the weather, guys. Y- yeah. But, yeah. Um, I'm going to try not to cough directly into the microphone. I'd appreciate that. I'm going to try to make my voice sound good. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> Nobody wants that, Kim. I don't know. Nobody. I mean, somebody might. Now, do you feel like, because you're sick now, I feel like I've been sick for the past month. Yeah. Just with like a cough um, and kind of low key, not feeling great. Uh-huh. And we are also in this crazy drought that is actually starting oh. to give me a little bit of anxiety. Okay. Yeah. Do you think the drought is sickness related? I'm just wondering if more sickness is like able to be strong Ugh. and be like, and transfer through the n- no moisture in the air. Mm. Like, doesn't moisture help something? Isn't moisture good? Like, I think moisture always... seems like it would be worse. But like people turn vaporizers on to moisten the air. Moisten. <laughs> you got to moisten the air. Yeah. Um, I think it's contributing. I think it's a contributing factor. All right. I mean, as far as a lot of other people think, I mean, this could be government run illness. Oh, you think the government is making a drought? No, I think they're making me sick. Oh, uh, why? I don't know. Because I can believe that. I can believe anything I want. <laughs> I guess so. That's that's did, true. But did you watch that video I sent you of that conspiracy theory the other day that Kurt Cobain? And- yeah. Well, I've, I actually have seen that before, you before have? you said it to me. Yes. And I just d- disregarded it. But you obviously really <laughs> well, were into it. Well, let's tell people what it is. So for those of you in our demographic, you, you all know and love Kurt Cobain of Nirvana fame. Yes. I mean, we did. We did. We were big mm-hmm. fans of Kurt Cobain yeah, back yeah, yeah. in the day. And we were also fans of another band called Weezer, 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 which, um, which is funny to me because when I was a kid, a Weezer was what they like growing up, uh-huh. a Weezer was what we called a penis. Nuh-uh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Really? Yes. It was a Weezer. Oh yeah. So a Weezer, a Weezer. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> was it a sick penis? <laughs> No, it was just a Weezer. Like, yes. that's just what they call Like, I just remember that's what. So when that band came out, you guys were like, ah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> really? We were. <laughs> and it's funny because I know of one other person uh-huh. um, who also felt the same way huh. when it came out. So one other person, not in my, not in my family, <laughs> okay. who also grew up calling penises Weezers. Uh-huh. And was also like, what? But I guess it's because it's asthma related and they're, they, we, he wheezed. Okay. That's where we are. But the conspiracy theory is that Kurt Cobain is Rivers Cuomo. Yes. Which is seriously dumb. So dumb. Like, why? (laughs) (laughs) And like, they, they mean this video that I watched maintained that I guess Kurt Cobain died. And then like a few months later, the Weezer album came out. Which isn't true. And then. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's true. Like, I know, I feel like there was a lot of overlap between, like, I remember the video from, for Buddy Holly. Yeah. Which is very memorable. It's a really great music video. Uh-huh. And, but it's also very much like there's a Nirvana video where, um, it's oh. for, um, God, why can't I think of the, the name of the song? You know, the one it's off of the, it's off of their like main album. Okay, sure. And it's like, she's the one who likes all the pretty songs and oh. she likes to sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that one. we well, remember like it starts out and they're all like clean cut singing uh-huh. and then it would like inter- intercut between them being all clean cut singing and then like wrecking, just wearing yeah. like dresses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Okay. But either way, that was a conspiracy theory we saw. Um, all I can think about is Weezer as a penis and <laughs> the fact that, um, that's all you can think about now. Well, no. All I can think about is the fact that my cousins called their penises their Petey Punky. <laughs> <laughs> Man. I feel like that would be a good name for a band. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they really, we really go out all out not, not to, to say, say penis. Yeah. Not to yeah. say penis growing. I feel like we say, we say that. What? Penis. Petey, Petey Punky. We don't say Petey Punky. <laughs> no. We say. And then they penis. had a cat named Punky later, which I always thought that was weird. Wow. That like, is weird. Yeah. And I know a a dog named Pete. So PD Punky. PD they Punky. might be, he, they might be reincarnated. PD Punky the cat might be reincarnated as PD the dog. 
Wow. Hence, Petey Punky. Hence. <laughs> okay. Hence. Yeah. Well, that's just crazy. Yeah. Um, you know what I did last night? What? I did an escape room. What? With uh, How do you do stuff that I don't know about? I talk to you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it was like an on-the-fly kind of a thing because my niece is down and staying with us. So we wanted to do something fun, but there's like no movies out right now. Okay. Because that was the first choice. We were going to go to the movies. The only movie that would be something they could potentially be interested in is the new Venom movie is out. Okay. But like my kids really weren't that into Venom. I don't know what that is. Venom is like a superhero one. It stars that guy from, uh, the, the Tom Hardy. Oh yeah. I, I, kind of, I kind of dig him. Okay. Um, the only reason I know about this is because the girls from my favorite murder, I guess they mentioned my favorite murder in that Jeez. movie and they were freaking out. <gasps> oh my God. I would freak out I too. Know. That's Isn't a that big, awesome? that's a, Big movie. Yeah. And he's awesome. Tom Hardy is awesome. And I, I kind of liked the, the Venom ones, but my kids are very much like they definitely didn't want anything to do with it. So I was trying to think, well, what else could we do? And, um, escape rooms came up, it came up as an option. <laughs> okay. Is so it still those same ones, the ones in Rio? Yeah. We went to the ones in Rio. I realized once we were in it that I had done the one before oh, really? that we were doing. Interesting. Yeah. You've, you escape rooms so much that you've duplicated escape rooms. I, uh, yeah, that's I did. Weird. I because, well, because I also room. think it's because it's, there's not that many age appropriate ones. Okay. So I think, you know, or non like super scary. I think I've done two escape rooms in your life. Yeah. Well, I've done a lot. I, I know you have. No, maybe. Yeah. Two. Really? Which were the two? What were the themes? I have no idea. You don't remember? One was for your birthday, I think. And that was like a pharaoh thing. Yeah, it was yeah. E Egyptian. Yeah. Um, and then the other one I did for like some leadership class. Okay. Oh, no, wait. And then I did one with as a bonding with a team at work. Oh, yes. That was fun. <laughs> that, yes. Was it? <laughs> um, yeah, this one... That's so funny. That just made me think that that team was in my dream last night. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've done them with my family. I've done them with uh, my kids. And it's super fun. I feel like my kids are at the age where they can do it. Like, I was very impressed good. by my kids last night. Um, they figured all the things out, but I had a problem in the middle of it. So, you know, with an escape room, you're put in the room now the, where, where we live, where this escape room was like, there, were, there was nobody else there. Like sure. we were the only people there mm -hmm. doing an escape room. The guy running the front desk was this young guy. Mm -hmm. And so it's like super quiet mm -hmm. in the, the rest of the area. We're in a room, we're doing the thing. Um, and you're not locked. The doors are, are never locked necessarily, sure. but you know, you're in the room, you're supposed to stay in the room. You have 60 minutes. The time does not stop and you have to be like, you to go to the bathroom. Kim, <laughs> I, cause we went after dinner Okay, and something hit my belly wrong. Oh no. And it was like, oh. it wasn't just like, I have to, I have to pee or I have to like, maybe could poop. It was like, emergency. Oh no. And I literally stood there holding a desk for a little bit, just thinking like, well, what am I going to do? Because the only bathroom in this place is out by the front desk. Yeah. If I, like, if I blow up that toilet the way I needed to blow up that toilet. Emily, you're on the everyone... podcast right now. You're not just talking to me. <laughs> I don't care. You know how it is. Everybody I blows don't. up a toilet a time or two. I've never pooped in my life. <laughs> I'm a <But> lady. <laughs> Come on, everybody poops and we can talk about it. But I was just like, well, if I come flying out of this room over to the bathroom where it's all quiet out there and just like dumb and dumber poop <laughs> in that toilet. <laughs> but dumb it's, and dumber I, poop. Yeah. So I just held on the table until it passed. But it was a it was a rough ten minutes Wait, there. You can will your will your poops away by holding on to something. I, it, it, like I, you know, like I, I it you did passed. some breathing. I did some breathing exercise. I did some Lamaze breathing. All right. And I got, but there was a point in time where like, I was like, well, these kids are just going to have to figure this thing out by themselves because yeah, I mean, I cares? can't, but, uh, but they figured it out. They escaped the room with 10 minutes to spare. That kid was like, I don't need this lady. You guys are my only customers on a Saturday night. Right. Like, I'm going to walk out this door as soon as we close. If you mess up that wet bathroom, that's not going to happen for me. <laughs> Why would it mess it up to that level where someone else would have to be involved? You're disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I would never. I would never. Like, Wait, I would literally be like, give me all your cleaning products. I would never make someone else do that. I went to um, the restroom at work the other day, and they recently put up new signs 
about the need to flush twice. Oh, dear Lord. Because, you know, the ladies can't keep it together. Can't look behind you to see if they've flushed properly. Do you think it's that they don't look or do you think that they're too embarrassed to, to flush do a twice? Flush? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. But I assume a lot of the time you're in that bathroom by yourself. Yeah. Just flush it twice. Nobody knows. Yeah. Do you think you're like wasting water or something? I don't think they're concerned about conservation. No. But yeah, take a little peek. Yeah. See if a little turd didn't go all the way down. I... Watch that. Make sure everything goes. Okay. Yeah. That's gross. Well, anyway, now there's haphazardly placed Microsoft Word generated signs on the back of the bathroom doors, which you know how I feel about those. Yeah. I don't like a sign no. hanging up and yelling at me in you my face. You should know better. You should know better. Like, that's the thing that's just hard. It's like, do we really need to bring paper and ink into this situation? <laughs> Just flush the freaking toilet yeah. until the brown goes down. All right. That's enough. <laughs> Jesus. What kind of podcast is this? It's the kind of podcast where, we, you know, we talk about things that are important to us. All right. And, and we also talk about movies. We do. Should we do that? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Let's talk about a movie. All right. All right. So it's my pick this week. It is. Despite the fact that I am very under the weather. <laughs> You're fine. I've mustered through. <laughs> Mustard? Mustard. Must, mustard. <laughs> mustard. Yeah. Whatever. You're fine. Just keep I've going. I made it through. You did. But just keep to going. To do this movie for she, you. She made it through the wilderness. So this was a movie that I wanted to watch earlier this season, and I did some research on, and then I went and searched, and I could not find it on the TV anywhere. Oh, I, I feel like I remember that yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we had double Shelley Long. Yes. <laughs> yes. Double Shelly Long. Um, so I'm bringing it back now. Let's do it. And um, I ordered the DVD okay. for us. Is Shelly Long in it? She's not. Okay. Sadly. <laughs> um, and this movie was one of my favorite movies of all time. I We loved this movie so much at my house. My sister and I watched this movie obsessively. We watched it on TV. We owned the VHS. We owned the DVD. I don't know what happened to it, but... I just really loved something about this movie appealed to me so much. I know this movie. I think so. I don't know if you ever, I, I assume you've seen it. Okay. But, um, but you love it, but I love it. Okay. But, and, but you had to have been a little bit older cause you're, a, you're a bit older than your sister. I'm a bit older. <laughs> yes. Um, it came out in 1989. Okay. So okay. I was like 12. Okay. Did you watch it at the time that it um, came out? I don't know. It must, I'm guessing it was on TV a lot. Was it a movie, but was it like a was it in the theaters at any point? Yeah, it was in the theaters okay. at a certain point. It's rated PG. Um, it definitely stars a lot of big names of the time. And um, it just delighted me. I just liked a lot of the stuff about it. My sister and I would quote it a lot and things like that. And um, kind of what we talked about last week, how you would like mimic accents and things like uh, that. Okay. <laughs> it's just, it, it takes place in the South. So there's a lot of Southern accents in it. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so the tagline of this movie is, on a summer weekend in 1963, four girlfriends made memories that would last a lifetime. I know what this is. What? Is this shag? It is. <laughs> How did you guess already? <laughs> because there's only... I, the Southern thing, I uh -huh. think, feel like gave it away. Okay. Because I'm like, well, how many movies are there that are like that? The first one I thought of was Steel Magnolias, but we've already done oh, that yeah, movie. Which is a delightful episode. If you have not yes. listened to that episode, <laughs> stop right now. And go uh -huh. listen to that episode. Okay. Have you seen this movie? I have, but not obsessively. I feel like my big sister really uh -huh. loved it. Okay. But I, um, I don't know if I watched it at the time when it came out. I don't know that I was allowed to because uh -huh. there's sex and boys. There is, but it's rated PG. So, and it's not that bad, but I do remember it being a little risque because, you know. There's cute boys in it. There's though, cute boys it? in it. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And they say sweet potato. Isn't that like no, something? They say it's the most fun. It's the most fun. And the one guy's name is Harley. Yeah, Harley. <laughs> and um and they call beer Bevo. Bebo? Bevo. Be Bevo? Bevo? <laughs> Why do they call it that? I don't know. Do other people call it that in the South? We do now. Is that a thing? <laughs> Bevo? Bevo. Yeah. Bevo would be a great name. Just talking about pets. That'd be a great name for a pet. Bevo. Bevo. Okay. So um <laughs> 
Set in 1963. Yes. Said that. Um, so that's a 26 year difference between 1989 and when the movie was, when the movie came out, 1989 to 1963. 27? 26. So that's like any movie that's like based in the 90s. Not the late 90s for us. So it would yeah. be like a movie that's based in the late 19, like 1998 ish, um, aimed at kids your daughter's age. Yeah. Think of it as that way. Um, Roger Ebert, he thought this movie was pretty interesting. He liked it. He gave it three out of four stars. And um, he had a lot to say about the fact that at that time, there were a lot of people making movies set in the six, the late 50s, early yes. 60s, mid 60s. And um, he was just kind of curious about what that was all about and why. Um I have theories on that. Okay. Well, so does Ebert. Okay. What's so Ebert's theory? He is the critic and the expert. I, I'm sorry. We are also some okay. sort of Eberts. Eberts. We're some sort of Eberts. <laughs> we, we've gotten some degree of Ebert, uh -huh. but go ahead. What does he so, say? You know, they were making movies that portrayed a simpler, more innocent time. Um, he says the years between 1955, when Rebel Without a Cause was released, and 1963, when John Kennedy was assassinated, have grown into an enchanted time for American movies. A time when rock and roll was new, and you could tell cars apart just by looking at them. I can't even begin to count all of the recent movies set in the late 1950s and early 1960s. They're so numerous, they almost constitute a genre of their own, especially when you add in all the biopics of 1950s rock stars, such as Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and Jerry Lee Lewis. Yeah, this was very much a cornerstone of our youth. I feel like a, we knew a lot about that time period, mm -hmm. and it was this mytho mythologicalized, what, you know what I'm trying to say. Do what? I don't know. Maybe it you was do, the time. It was the time. But I feel like when we were like the wonder years was a TV show. That was a big yes. TV show. Like the music of that time was the music that I listened to. Like mm -hmm. my parents were very much of that time mm -hmm. and, you know, talked about that time a lot. And I feel like it was like, like, I don't know that my kids know as much about the nineties as I knew right. about the sixties well, when yeah. I was growing up. Because, um, they did say, you know, movies that portrayed the 80s in the 80s were a lot about drugs and sure. alienation and, um, you know, teen angst and things like that. So this was, you know, an era where sure. it was more pop and fun and groovy and, you know, right. all that stuff. Well, I have, so it's Not funny. Groovy. Okay. Far out, maybe. Sure. So here's my theory on why right. that these movies, I do think that it is something there is something in that generation, mm -hmm. your parents' generation, the boomer generation, uh -huh. that is very, um, that very much thinks like they don't want to let go. They think that they, they really had this best thing, right? Right. The best time to be the alive. best time to be alive. The best, you know, um, you know, that they went through you this thing America that was better. Was great. Well, well, this kind <laughs> this of, is this believe. is the conversation. Yeah. That, that, not that America was great, but even those who maybe aren't on that side of that slogan, um, also just kind of feel this, like, well, we did this and we did that and all these things happen. But I, I feel like people in our generation also had some big things. Yeah. Like that we have gone through, especially millennials, I think are very competitive comparable. So I feel like, I always feel like generation X gets lost in the sauce. They and do. that was the conversation that I was having, um, with my husband recently because of current political times. Um, because we really have only had one person who maybe was in our generation and we are, you know, we're at, at the point when I think my parents were our same age, they had had a couple of people who were what, like presidents? presidents that okay. were in their generation. But we've had so many presidents in that boomer generation right. and it won't stop. <laughs> and I, stop, th and I feel stop. like, and I, but I feel like nothing <laughs> and nothing, no shade against it. But I feel like right now our, our society is so ruled by um, technology mm -hmm. that we got to get more people who are nativist to technology sure. in leadership positions. Sure, sure. And that's my, my end of my thing. Okay. But I do think that there is something in that generation that has caused this big reverence to it to go back because you just don't see the same thing right. with other generations. Right. Well, I think too, um, it's interesting to me 
I think so many movies now are set, movies and books, are set in times that are not modern or current times because they don't want to have the addition of the cell phone in them. Because I think the cell phone Dates edition, it. no, I think it, it eliminates a lot of possibilities uh, yeah, for, that's true. for trouble or for hijinks or for comedy or for, you know, things like that. Oh yeah. I mean, a lot of movies could just be solved by, by having self, a cell phone, by having a cell phone. Yeah. 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 But yeah. like you, so I think a lot of people tend to are like, oh, it's, it's just easier. Let's make it set in this time period because then yeah. um, there's a disconnection of people, which causes better horror movies and things like that. That's when they're true. All so. Very true. But this movie is, if I recall, like I put this movie in my head with a few different movies that were of that time period that like the dresses, like I can imagine like the style with the little like knickers that girls wore, like little mm-hmm. um, clam digger clam pants. Diggers, yeah. Yeah. And like the, the hair with the bubble flip and everything. Uh-huh. Um, I, I mean, there, I feel like there was a lot of movies of that time period and it was, it was fun, even though nobody was dressing like that. No, no, yeah. no. It's not like there was a renaissance of that look or anything really. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Capri pants did come back, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like there's a little bit, remember the show rags to riches. Yeah. That was set in that time period. I believe it was. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Um, well anyway, so the movie stars Bridget Fonda. Sure. She is, um, she was in another movie we watched, which, I can't remember what it was. We watched singles with her. Oh, singles. Yes. yes. She's super, super great. <laughs> she is. I'm trying not to cough. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a good job. You're doing Thanks. a really good job. Um, she's the daughter of Peter Fonda and the niece of Jane Fonda. Um, Nepo baby. She's a Nepo baby. Um, she's married to Danny Elfman. I believe we talked about it on that episode. We did. Also stars Phoebe Cates. Oh, yeah. Phoebe Cates. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Phoebe Cates. Love Phoebe Cates. A lot of dudes love Phoebe Cates. Well, that's because of Fast Time at Ridgemont High. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. Does she show her boobs? In this? In Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Or she does. I think she might. <coughs> she was in like a bikini or something. She's in a bikini. The okay. pool scene is pretty popular. Yes. Um, She was also in Gremlins. She was in Gremlins. And another Tweed family favorite, Drop Dead Fred. <laughs> <laughs> you love that movie. Now, she married... Um, the guy, Kevin Klein. Kevin Klein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still married and they have two kids. Good for them. Um, this movie also has Annabeth Gish in it and she's my favorite in this movie. Her character's called Pudge. Yes. And I feel like this is, we can talk about it after, but you know, she's not pudgy. <laughs> she's not. <laughs> she's yeah. just regular. Yeah. Um, and then Scott Coffey, he was a big actor at the time. I don't remember that name. Yeah. He was, um, he was pretty popular then. Okay. So, yeah, Scott Coffey, you don't recognize him. I don't recognize him or remember him. Okay. The director, her name is Zelda Barron. Um, She directed some other movies, nothing I've ever heard of, something called Secret Places. But she did direct four Borg George music videos. (laughs) But I couldn't find out which ones. Okay. Awesome. I tried because I knew you were going to ask. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't think he had, I think he had about four. So I don't know. The eighties, everybody made a video for everything. That's true. Not that they were seen though, but I feel like he had a couple of people still make music videos. Yeah, I know. I like, because I enjoy watching music videos. You still watch them? Sometimes I'll go onto YouTube and just watch the music videos. I'll watch old ones. ones. And I'll, if, if they have a new one, I'll look into it. Like, um, there was a, a, guy on um snl the -hmm. musical guest this weekend Mm -hmm. his name's mcgee okay and i hadn't heard of him before so i went and i watched his music videos okay he's like a little boy who plays guitar and but he was good okay yeah um the film grossed approximately 6.9 million dollars at the box office was a little disappointing but it did receive mixed to positive reviews from critics i told you about ebert he was fond of it (laughs) Sure. Ron Tomatoes has a 65% approval rating. Um, the New York Times said a teenage nostalgia film set in the summer of 1963 suggests a frothy female answer to Barry Levinson's diner with a Southern twist. Frothy. Frothy. Frothy female. So frothy female. I don't care for that. Um, TV Guide liked it too. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then um, uh, uh, Ebert had actually commented on this too, that the cast was pretty great and he felt like it was 
you know, a great crop of sure. young actors and actresses. Fun to watch. Like, I feel like it's the kind of movie that's just... It's fun. it's fun to watch. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there really were not a lot of facts about this, but it does feature a form of dance called the Carolina Shag. Sure. Okay. Which, and, which is funny because it's a movie called Shag, and like shagging is having sex. In Britain. In Britain. Yeah. But I wonder if that's why I wasn't allowed to watch it when I was a kid. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Because your parents are British. <laughs> you know, <laughs> my mom is an your Anglophile, <laughs> so could be. Um, yeah, so the Carolina Shag is a um, is a partner dance done primarily to beach music. Okay. Um, and I'll put this in here for Eddie. 100 to 130 beats per minute in 4-4 four, four time signature. <laughs> <laughs> Means nothing to me. I know. Nothing to um, me. It's people still do like competitions and stuff like that with shag dancing. Okay. Um, like you, I sometimes I think I get some of them on my algorithm. Okay. Um, it knows. <laughs> it knows. It's the official state dance of South Carolina. Um, oh, and God. it became that in 1984. And it's also the official popular dance of North Carolina as of 2005. Do we have an official dance of New Jersey? I don't know. What do you think it would be? The running man. <laughs> Definitely. The Roger Rabbit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, it's funny. I was thinking back. I was thinking about, I forget what I was watching, but something about um, the dancing of that, of this time period, like mm -hmm. the 60s, and uh, how there were all of these named dances. Mm -hmm. Like, I think when we were watching um, True Beverly Hills and they were mm -hmm. doing the Freddy dance yeah, yeah, and everything, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and there was the twist and there was, you know, the mashed potatoes mm -hmm. and all these other things. And I guess that still exists. Yeah, I mean, they had like the, um, the Dougie. Right. And then what is that one? The super. There well, was then I know the one now, um, like the gritty. My yeah. kids always do and the gritty. And then there's the one where they like the floss. Yes, the floss. So they all have names. They do. Yeah. I like that we do that as a culture. <laughs> as a culture. <laughs> yeah. I celebrate that <laughs> okay. about us. Okay. So the Carolina Shag is a dance that originated in the African American communities, which you could probably guess by watching the dance in the late 1930s and became popular in the 1940s and 50s along the coasts of North and South Carolina. When the white people appropriated it. Correct. Okay. <laughs> it's like hairspray. Um, yeah. It's a smooth, upbeat dance with a basic step. <laughs> like that you call it smooth. <laughs> smooth, upbeat dance with a basic step. That's a six count, eight step pattern, whatever that means. It's characterized by minimal upper body movement, which is why the white people like it. Oh, sure. <laughs> and boys twirling girls and feet kicking and sliding around. Okay. Um, and it was like a social phenomenon. Like it really was a big thing that people learned the dance. And you'll see in this movie, I remember, um, she like ties something to the doorknob. Yes. And like puts it around her waist and dances with it to practice the steps and things like that. Um, so teenagers from across the Carolinas um, would go to places like Fat Harold's Beach Club and the Spanish Galleon Nightclub to do the shag dance. Fun. That sounds like I a know. really good time. I what gotta say. this weekend? I'm shagging. Well, I, I feel like what we missed out on that because when we were, when we were going to clubs yes. in our 20s uh -huh. i don't feel like that was no the, it, like electronic music but yeah but even even if i didn't go to places like that i went to more like the hipster thing was happening yeah, yeah, yeah. then like in the early 2000s uh -huh. and i don't feel like people were doing any sort of steps to hipster music no i mean the closest things we have are like the the cha-cha slide or the american was it the electric slide the american <laughs> slide <laughs> Yeah, but we weren't doing that. You weren't going out to a club. You were, that's like a wedding with a bunch of like oh, yeah, people. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Or like a, a work party. Yeah. And I mean, the only, the closest thing you had in bars like that to something was like Sweet Caroline. Fucking slut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be it, right? Yeah, that would definitely be that it. That was the only thing that brought the people together. Yeah, there was no, I mean, I guess, um, yeah, where, where we were and the places that we were going, it was still more of like a, people were all dancing together. There was a certain kind of dance, I feel like, that was happening. Yeah. To that, because people would dance to that hipstery music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, which sounds not like how it is. Like that, it's more like rock and roll, like mm -hmm. the white stripes and sure, sure. the strokes. There was definitely dancing going on. Mm -hmm. um, it was more like jerky, I feel like. Yeah, I but, was more of a cover band kind of gal. You liked a cover band? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so much. <laughs> Yeah, I liked a good DJ. DJ, there was this guy, um, DJ Dirty P, Dirty P. 
Okay. Who was in Dirty um, P Funky, you think? Maybe. <laughs> he was in I think it was DJ Dirty P. He had this um this thing called Making Time in Philadelphia, uh-huh. which was a dance party that would every once a, I think it was like once a month, it would go to all different clubs like uh-huh. throughout Philadelphia. And you would go and it was like you would have a good a DJ, DJ Dirty P or whatever his name was. And he would do, he would play music and then you would always have a band. Okay. So I saw a lot of those kind of bands of the time mm-hmm. going to all of those. Um, remember the, all like the, the bands yeah. uh, would be at those things. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Like it was mm-hmm. so much fun to go to them, but um, I don't know that they do it anymore. Yeah. I don't know what's happening out there. Gotta be honest. I don't know what the kids do. I saw that um, over Thanksgiving weekend. Cause and I assume it still is. But when we were young, when we were young, um, people went out the night before Thanksgiving. Like, that was a really big night to go sure. out. Do you remember? Absolutely. And um, I saw that leading up to Thanksgiving locally, the band Fuzzy Bunny Slippers, which was a very popular cover band of our youth, oh, is yeah. playing somewhere around here. Oh, they got to be, like, in their, like, yeah. late 50s. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I'm kind of curious. Might want to go. You do love a cover band. I do. I do. I just said it. Yeah. So, um, we're going to watch Shag. I don't really like, honestly, there were no other facts about it except. I'm excited to watch it. It's like a fun movie. It's a fun movie. I, like I said, it was one of my faves Yeah, and I feel like we need a happy little movie to watch. Let's go watch a happy little movie. Let's do it. That was the most fun. <laughs> would you care for a Bebo? <laughs> I would. <laughs> oh my goodness, you love this movie. I do. I just think it's cute. There's a lot of Confederate flags. Yeah, I don't in this think movie. that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> I like I mean, to say I don't. Re- I did not remember that part, <laughs> and I feel ashamed for it. But they were very into the Confederate flag in the South in the 50s, 60s, apparently. Sure, and I wonder if that's why this movie is not out there as much maybe <laughs> i mean the the movie starts and it says shag really big across the screen and the letters are done up in a confederate flag pattern motif yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it came on and kim and i both were like <gasps> oh dear oh no what have i done <laughs> i know i guess that's the big thing with the south it's and i in my recollection of this movie did not remember how much of the South is involved in this. It's very Southern. It's very Southern. <laughs> yeah. Very, very. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I mean, I enjoyed it. I, sl- I love it. You do? <laughs> I don't what know. Is, what is it about it that you love so much? I just like that there's, well, they, that there's friendship. <laughs> <laughs> sure. There's, there's boys. Yeah, there And is. there's a party. And then there's a, a, a choreographed dance. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's so much about this movie. It's not, it's nothing crazy. No. But it's super, just everything that you want in a movie when yeah. you're young. You just mm-hmm. want cute boys. Right. You want some dancing and some good music. And friendship. And friendship. <laughs> <laughs> and those are all the things. And this yeah, movie has them all. Yeah. And good outfits. Yeah. And, and solid, solid clothing choices. And good hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Bridget Fonda. She's gorgeous. Bridget Fonda. And she's Re- a good actress. She's amazing. Yeah. Love Bridget Fonda. She's great. Phoebe Cates. She's yeah. also super yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all cute. I have to say, I enjoyed in this movie that their hair was like real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, except for when they had it, they did it up for when they went out. Yeah. But they did their hair. Like it, it, even their hair, when it was done up, it was like feasible that they would have done it themselves. yeah, 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 yeah. And the way it was when it wasn't done up was just normal. Yes. And I don't know why those kind of things really catch my eye. I do. I feel like these days... The way that beauty is put out there for other people, it's, it's so unattainable. Like, right. even if you watch on TikTok or YouTube, these videos of like how to do your hair in those ways, it involves buying extensions and right. crazy right, right, right. stuff right. Yeah. that there's just no way. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like when we were younger, it was just like the hair you got was the hair you had and you just dealt <laughs> you with just it. dealt with it. <laughs> yes, I agree. And, you know, there's definitely, we. Ta- I think we talked about this recently in another movie. There's not a lot of products to handle frizz. No. So you just deal with it. You just have frizz. You just deal with it. So do you want me to give like a once over on this movie or do you want to give the once over? 
You can start because I'm afraid I'm going to cough. But okay. you, you start it. I'll give the one. It's not, I mean, so you have four friends. Yes. And one of them is getting married. Carson. She's fianced. And that's Phoebe Cates. Mm -hmm. And so her friends are doing like a last Goonie weekend. Mm -hmm. And they tell her they're taking her to like Colonial Williamsburg or something. Spartanburg. Oh, no, wait. Fort Sumner. Fort Sumner. But really, they're taking her to Myrtle Beach. Not Myrtle Beach. I'm not allowed to go to Myrtle Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Which, they get to Myrtle Beach, and it is just fun summer town. It's like spring break. Yeah. It's oh. um fun sun weekend, sun and fun weekend sure. or something like that. It's like, there's, there's a banner, guys. There's a banner. So there's a, a banner. They have all these celebrities coming to town because there's a shag contest. Yeah. And... Every, it's just very exciting. And there's cars in the street, people dancing everywhere, people drinking beer and just having a good time. Bevos. Bevos. So I think, so they get there and they immediately meet two cool cats. Local boys. Two <laughs> local boys. And they even say, they're like, we don't mess around with those local boys. Do you think that there were people, so we grew up in a beach town. <laughs> we did. Do you think that there were people that, whose parents were like, we don't associate with local people when they came to town. I think local people have definitely have some sort of like stank. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's certainly a reputation oh, yeah? among local people. Interesting. Yeah. Like don't get involved with them. Don't get involved with the local. Really? Oh, I could say, think about it, Kim. You're where we lived. Okay. So the, the place where we lived and much probably the same as this. Yeah. You have the people who are going there. This is their second home. This is their second home. They're, They're all wealthy. rich. Like yeah. all the people that would come down this summer are all very rich. Right. The assumption is the people who live here are like us working in the stores. Right. We're not super rich. Right. We're working in stores. <laughs> Yes. At 15, because we have to. Sure. Those kids who came down, they didn't They're have to. They're off for the whole summer. They're on the beach the whole summer. Right. right. Okay, guys. So I can definitely see how a parent would be like, don't go hang out with the townies. Yeah. <laughs> you know? The carpet bagger. The carpet baggers would say, don't hang out with the locals. Don't hang out with the locals. They did call them carpet baggers in this. Did they? Instead of shoebies. Oh, yes. So I feel like... So they come, they meet these boys immediately. One of the girls in the group, they call her Pudge. So they, they call her Pudge and she's not pudgy at all. No. She's cute. Um, and pretty small, <laughs> but they call her Pudge. They do say that she used to be. They do infer that right, she right, used right. to, she lost a lot There's of There's a lot of inference like, that though that you, that she's pudgy because when she was fat, she could not be attractive. And never. No. A boy um, would never look at her like no, that. No, no, no. And that um, a lot of people don't recognize her because that's not Pudge. Pudge is fat. Right. <laughs> and then, but then there is a girl that continuously calls her fat ass in this. So right. It's so, still, it's still on her. It's still on her. Yeah. Um, but she's not pudgy. No. Not she's not a stick either. I would say that the no, other girls no, are like no. sticks. Like right, literal, right, right. like nothing on them. Yeah. So sure. she's probably like a size, like I said, like she's probably like a size like six or something. Yeah. And they're size twos. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. So she, um, she meets one of the boys immediately and they kind of like each other. And they're like this cute, innocent love yeah, yeah, that's yeah. so sweet. And they're like getting to know each other on the beach by asking each other like, questions like, well, did you go all the way with a girl? And did you go to first base? Did and you ever kiss a boy's ear? Yeah. <laughs> French a boy's ear. French a boy's ear. So, but it's real cute. Yeah, and like, yeah, they can't, yeah. they answer all the questions for each other, but they put towels over their heads. Yeah. So they don't have to look at each other because they're embarrassed. I thought that's so cute. Like, yeah. I love the two of them. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. that whole story mm -hmm. with them. So that's one of the friends. The other friend is, um, Mel Marlena. Marlena. Uh -huh. And that is Bridget Fonda. Yes. And she is the daughter of a preacher. Uh -huh. She's not going to college. Cause that's the thing too. Like the one's getting married, but it, they kind of say, well, everyone's going to college, but she says, no, I'm not going to college. Right. She's the daughter of a pastor, but she's gorgeous. And she's just like, I'm going to Hollywood. Yeah. But she kind of decides that like, that's not her initial intent in the movie. Like, well, but I feel like even when you first her see her, she's looking for an opportunity out of there. Like in the beginning, she's looking at like beauty queens and she's saying, well, I'm prettier than these yeah, people yeah, yeah, and exactly. I'm prettier than the Hollywood people. Like I could do this. Like she fully has the confidence of like, I could fully be this thing. Right. I just need to find an opportunity to get in front of someone's face and then I will be 
I will be able to achieve this thing. Right. So that's her thing. Um, the other one, Luann, mm-hmm. <laughs> Luann is, um, she's the one who has the car. She's the Senator's daughter and they're going to Myrtle Beach to stay in her family's house, which yes. is a mansion. Yes. It's huge. Yeah. So she's like super rich and she's also the one who's like making everybody, she's very stressed she's about. She's got all the rules and, um, well, she's into breaking the rule of going to, um, Myrtle Beach instead of, uh, Fort Sumner. She has like all these rules about the house. Like they're not allowed to sit on the furniture. They're not mm-hmm. allowed to have booze. Um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of rules in this. She's movie. got a lot of rules. She's very afraid of getting caught. She's like a very stressed out. Like even though she's but her mom is the same way. Her mom, when she left, she was like, well, you're not wearing shorts. Sure. To Fort Sumner. Yeah. She was definitely, you could like, you feel like with her, she's grown up with all the rules of being a yeah. Southern girl, a Southern belle. And they are, they live within her. Yeah. She believes yeah. She's a, that. And she's the least attractive of all of the friends. And, but she's also a pageant girl. She is a pageant girl. They're all debutantes. Right. Well, you know, so I think I've, I said in other episodes, when I went to college, I had roommates who were from the South. Yes. And they talked a lot about this whole pageant thing, mm-hmm. which is very – and you see it in this movie, too. I think girls who – and I don't know how it is now, obviously, um, but girls who – but even when I was – you know, this was would have been, you know, the late 90s, the – girls that I was in college with talked a lot about growing up as a girl in the South and the pageant girls. Like I remember this one girl who was friends with one of my roommates. They were like, Oh, she was a pageant girl. And she talked about herself. Like, well, I was a pageant girl growing Uh up and I did all the pageants and she had all these pictures you could see of her Mm -hmm. in all of these pageants. And it's, it's a big part of their culture down there. And I think where we grew up, I mean, there was some of that. Who didn't love the Miss America pageant, which is right up the road in Atlantic City? Yeah. But it was not... It, it, like, there's no culture. There's no it. culture around There that. was no, like, pageant culture down here. I mean, no. we, have, we have birthed quite a few Miss New Jerseys locally. We certainly And have. we are so proud of that. We are. However. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't wasn't feel like... Deal. Did you feel that pressure growing up to be a lady? And, like, no. you had to cross your legs and you had to, like, wear certain things and you mm. had to act a certain way. No. I, that was I feel never like, a part of growing up. No. I feel like our families were actively... Uh, like revolt, our parents were actively revolting against that. Like I think yeah. that culture or that time period had passed. Oh, I had a sh- my favorite shirt when mm-hmm. I was in kindergarten. Mm-hmm. It was a red shirt, and it said, "Girls can do anything; boys can do only better." Uh-huh. And I was so proud of that shirt. Well, we just talked about this recently. My favorite book when I was a child was that A is for Annabelle book. That's it was true. all about being a proper lady. <laughs> you craved it. <laughs> you would have loved it. You love this movie. You love that book. Yeah. You but that was even it. more Victorian. It was very Victorian. That A is for Annabelle. Yeah. Yeah. You need, But you, you would have loved to be a proper lady and have like all, you know, the stuff. Well, I do declare. <laughs> I think I was just too sloppy to do any of that stuff <laughs> growing up. I was always a bit of a mess. Like, never would mm-hmm. I have. Yeah. Okay. So what happens next? So, um, oh, and then the other friend, they call her Sugar a lot. Yeah. Like, Suge. The, what's her name? The, Luann? Not Luann. He's the one who's getting married. Carson. Carson. Mm-hmm. Carson Daly. Not her name. <laughs> uh-uh. But Carson, it's like a very not. Like the other names are so to me like Southern Belle names. Like even Pudge's name, real name is Caroline. Caroline, yeah. And um, but her name being Carson, just I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, so she is supposed to get married, but she's like you can tell from the beginning she's not into it. She's a little like flighty, and, and she's supposed to get married to a tobacco family heir. Yeah, he's a good Southern boy, and yeah, yeah. So she's got her life kind of all set up for her, and this is her last. She's you know this is her last hurrah, but she's not into like they trick her into going on this trip. She's not. Yeah, she doesn't know that she's going to Myrtle Beach, and then when she finds out, she's like, okay, but I'm not going to dance because it wouldn't be right. Yes, she's very much like against it. I have. To, she's very much like I have to call Harley, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But. They immediately, one of the boys that they immediately meet is named Buzz. Buzz Ravenel. (laughs) 
And he is a sweet potato. <laughs> <as they call. laughs> he's just very handsome. And he has his shirt off a lot. And yeah. he's very tan. Mm-hmm. And Picture Dylan McKay. Yes. He's very much a Dylan. He's like a Southern Dylan, Dylan. but just free spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Except for the fact that despite being a local boy and somewhat trash, He's going to Yale. Well, I think you're supposed to be like, well, he's really smart. Like, even though, you, you know, don't judge a book by his, their cover. Like, yeah, yeah. This- she doesn't really tell him that. Like, he's definitely playing into that bad boy thing to try to, like, lure her in. Yeah, and it works. Succeeds. And it works. And it will work again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, he immediately is trying to, like, get in her pants. And she's... Not into it, but she's not running away yeah, either. She's not fighting it. Yeah, she's not. She's still hanging out with him. Oh, yeah. Like holding he, his hand. Yeah, like he shows up the next morning. Like they dance together. They slow dance together. Mm-hmm. And then they go out to like the Shake Shack or something and have some sodas. And like she's fully continuing to talk to him. I mean, I feel like if if you were really somebody who was dedicated to your fiance, you would be like, I need you to go. Right. Or like, you would go. Yeah. You'd be like, I have to leave yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm actively not speaking to you. Correct. But she wasn't, she wasn't running. And that's why Buzz, Buzz is, he's no dummy. He's, he's no dummy. He sees. He's no dummy. He's no dummy. <laughs> he's no David Duchovny. <laughs> why don't you love me? <laughs> but, but he's, but he obviously, he knows, he knows he's going to get there eventually. He's yeah, just yeah, got to yeah. stick around and it's going to happen for him. Right. So basically this is a trip for four friends. And then by the first night, they're all like off doing different things. They're all like running yeah, off. They don't hang out together. A night away, a night out went when we were Absolutely. younger all the time. Like you would start out and be like, yeah, we're all going out. It's going to be the best. We're going to hang out. And then within 45 minutes. <laughs> Things were divided. Someone was like, well, we're going here. We're going there. I'm going there. <laughs> right. Like, you know what I mean? Different things like that. So it, it is true to life in that way. It's sort of, yes. Except that, as we were saying, as we were watching it, you and I were both the people who would have, like, anxiety about a person who would just leave. Right. <laughs> well, we would be the ones, like... We were the... I'm a little bit Luann. I think I'm a little Luann and a little Pudge. Yeah. And uh, maybe a sprinkling in of Marlena. Yeah. A little bit. But I think I'm I'm a, a, a big percentage Luann. <laughs> right. But Marlena, she's the one that was running off with the boys. That's true. Yeah. That's true. So, yeah. 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 Okay. So keep going. So anyway. So um, the next day they go, he shows up in her bedroom. Yeah. To go fishing. So they're kind of like, a, they've paired off. Mm-hmm. Um, which if it were, Okay. If it were you and me and, like, two other friends and we all went and it was like you were supposed to get married. This was like you're – we've stolen you away because uh-huh. you're supposed to get married. Sure. And then all of a sudden, like, you need a boy first day. That boy's in our house uh-huh. the next day taking you to a thing. I feel like me and the rest of friends would be like, oh, my God, Kim. <laughs> like, did you see that she's going with this boy? <laughs> and I feel like I would be like, Kim, like, I would have to have one of those, like, talks with you right, with my right. eyes. Like, do you know what you – do you want to do this? Do you, are you, um, I'll support you if right. you want to do this. But, like <laughs> – Right, right, right. Do you know what, like, are we, are we willing to do this? Yeah, and they'd yeah. be like, okay. Right. And then you kind and of I have that. And I'd be like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, I got you. Shut up right now. I don't want to hear it from you. <laughs> no, well, I, I get it. Buzz is hot. <laughs> right. Do it. I support you and I will, I will take it to the goddamn grave. <laughs> if you want it to be like that, I will take it to the grave. Right. But then, um, there's a, so, so. Mar- Marlena, she, she's, oh, she's looking for her way out. So the first way out, she's, there's like a pageant. The Sun Queen contest. Miss yes. Sun Queen. And she's like, I'm going to win Miss Sun Queen. And she's going to do it by writhing around with a Confederate flag. Yeah, because that's just going to be, I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's a solid plan. But Luann comes in. She's like, well, you can't do that. You have to recite Gone with the Wind and you have to dress more like a lady. But that's really the wrong advice. Yeah. So, but one of the judges, Jimmy this, Valentine, Jimmy Valentine, who's like an Elvisy wannabe yeah. pop star. Yeah, 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 he's a greaser. He's a greaser. But Louis, uh, Mar- Marlena kind of sees this as, well, this is how I'm going to get discovered. Yes, like he's going to discover me. Right. Um. She gets there, and it just doesn't. Like she, she loses to another girl who's wearing a Confederate flag bathing suit, mm-hmm. and who is writhing around doing that yes and of course that girl wins that girl wins that's the lesson that's the lesson um trust your gut i think that's the lesson (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah. Trust your gut. Trust your gut. Be a slut. That's, That's right. what I always say. <laughs> oh man, I need that shirt. <laughs> so then they go, but then like Marlene's really mad at Luann. She's like, listen, the only way you're going to make this up to me is you're going to get Jimmy Valentine to come back to your house for a party mm -hmm. so that I can like hang out with him. Right. So Luann, true to form, she does it. Yeah, she does. Good for her. And she, um, she gets Jimmy Valentine to go back to the house. In all of this chaos, mm -hmm. um, Harley, mm -hmm. the fiance, oh, shows yeah. up mm -hmm. down in Myrtle Beach, and it's like chaos. But you you find out very quickly that Luann has the hots for Harley. She sure does. She really does. She doesn't even try and hide it. No, she doesn't. She's just like, I don't care about my friendships. Fuck those friendships. Right, right, right. She immediately turns her back on Carson. She does. Immediately. She does. Bad friend. Like mm -hmm. such a bad friend. Um, but then, um, so then they do have this like rager of a party. Yes. Which is crazy. Yes. And, but it doesn't like the Jimmy Valentine ends up like staying with Marlena, Marlena. and then, um, Harley and, um, Luann, they're like slow dancing because Luann finally, she gets tired of being uptight and she just takes a big swing of booze. She does. And she ends up like with, with Harley and then Carson goes off and does it with does Buzz. It. They, they do, do it on it. a boat. Mm -hmm. and they do it on a boat. But the, um, but Pudge and her boy, Chip, Chip, they end up talking in a tub and he's like real sweet. He's like, well, I'm going to the Marines and I'll write to you. Yeah. But you're just like a really good friend. You're not somebody who I'm in love with. And she's real sad about that. I know. That hurts. It does hurt. I've been there. I know. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but then um, but then the house is just trashed by this party. Yes. And then you find out the next day that the senator is going to be coming to the house. Oh, my God. Not the senator. And he's going to be judging the shag contest that is. Pudge and Chip were supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. So, chaos, you know, chaos ensues. And then at the end of the day, um, Marlena realizes that Really, Jimmy Valentine isn't the boss. The boss right. is the manager. And right, that's right, the right. one who did Because she's small. Because he's, he's small potatoes. Jimmy yes. Valentine is small potatoes. Right. You go with, she sees who's got the power. Mm. And, you know. She's a smart girl. She is. She does what she, she gets. Does. She gets the mom's dress on. She gets the scarf on. She does her hair up in like a b little beehive thing. Yeah. And, and she's, then she goes and she hooks up with the manager. She does. And she's fully like, I... I know that I'm going to succeed in this. Right. So, like, don't wait for me. I'm not yeah. going back home. I'm not coming back with you. I am going with them. To Hollywood. Yeah. Like, so I have, like, my little bag packed over here. Right. And I will see you later. Because right. I this is the only plan I have, and it is definitely going to work. Right. But it does. So good for her. Yeah. Um, But then... <laughs> so that's how her story ends. Then you have Pudge and Chip... They end up, they, they really, he loved her all along. They enter the shag contest. They enter the shag contest. And of course they win. They won, guys. They absolutely won. Because they're so good. They're so good. Um, Marlena, no, not Marlena, uh, Carson. Carson she d ends up breaking off her engagement with Harley uh -huh. and she's in love with Buzz. And I guess yeah, now she's going to marry love. him. It's been like two days, guys, but everyone's in love. Oh, yeah. Full love. And like she, heavy love. Yeah. And we all know that that works out. It probably did. Back, yeah, I mean, back then. Back sure. then. Simpler times. Simpler times. <laughs> and then um, with Luann ends up with Harley, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though she's against tobacco. Yes. But he is too. And he, and she pretty much um, rats out her friend. She's like, Luann's like, Carson, I'll tell the truth to my parents if you tell Harley the truth about Buzz. Yeah. And, um, which is okay. Yeah. And then, um, she's like, Harley, I have to tell you something. And Luann's basically like, she bagged him. Like, <laughs> like she immediately gives up the goose. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I mean, in real world, like they show them at the end, everybody's friends with each other. Still, yeah, they yeah. sing a song on the porch in the South, and it's weird. <laughs> but, in the real world, like, fuck you, Luann. Yeah, how dare you? How dare you? That's, that's a terrible friend. Unforgivable. Mm -hmm. Unforgivable. Yeah. yeah. But that was pretty much the whole movie. There were so many fun little parts in this movie. Uh -huh. Like, little... I can see why you and your sister quoted a lot. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of little great things like sure. that in there. Um, I wrote in my notes, Southern women are weird. Because I feel like they are a little bit weird. Well, they're just raised differently. They are raised differently. Yeah. Like beauty is definitely, it's feel, I feel like all those like feminine, femininity is definitely put on a higher 
held in higher regard uh-huh. than maybe it was when we were growing up. Yeah, it's just interesting. I mean, I think you think of like, um, you just think of the United States of all having the same type of culture mm-hmm. or the same, you know what I mean? And it's not, it's, it's definitely, there's definitely different, um, stuff happening in the South. Have you seen those things that people do for like homecoming where they wear those like big ribbon things like in high school? I'll send it to you. Oh, I, <laughs> I've been obsessed with, there's this one guy who makes these TikToks and there's all these girls in the South and I guess they like, yell they uh, make these videos where they're just like my name my name's Carson and I'm going to I'm going to USA yeah. And, yeah, and then yeah. this guy just goes like he'll repeat it but it's like he he breaks it down into just the sound of what they're saying not necessarily the words because right. the way that they say it is so comical it doesn't even sound like words right like I feel like the first time I heard it I was like what did that person just say and then there's that whole culture too online of like the Bama Rush have you seen that where um, the girl, like the sorority girls, they'll um, stop them to do an interview and like ask them what they're wearing and they'll break down like how much everything costs for them like to go to a football game and they'll be like, my bracelet's from this and my bracelet is this and my shoes are this and this is this. What? Yeah. Like all the time? Yeah. Every game they have to buy new stuff? Uh, yeah. It's like very, and it's, you know, expensive stuff. That's so weird. It's very interesting. And then there's definitely, like, things where they'll be like, oh, this bracelet's from Amazon, but then, like, this bracelet's, like, a Cartier love bracelet that's $10,000 or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, they'll – it's very, very interesting. Yeah, I feel – yeah, we all live so differently in this world. (laughs) It's just crazy to me. I I just – yeah, yeah. Um, there was one funny thing that drink we didn't, so we bought, watched movies with subtitles now <laughs> and, um, that is helpful sometimes because I feel like you go years and years and years without really knowing what people said. Oh, absolutely. You're like, wait, what? And then we realized at one point they're like, when the party's breaking out, it's about to get wild and they're yelling purple Jesus, Jesus purple, purple Jesus. Jesus. And I was like, what's a purple Jesus? So purple Jesus is a drink. We Googled it. Yes. And it's just a lot. It looks like it's just like a ton of booze all together at a vat. And they call it purple Jesus because when you throw up is purple. And when you look in the toilet after you throw up, you go, Jesus. <laughs> Which is pretty fun. I mean, it's basically like like bug juice, like punch. Yeah. Like I feel like at parties where you just have that punch where it's just they just put punch, like punch. You know, punch. Where you but they just put all the different booze in it yeah, and then yeah, just yeah. a shit ton of Kool Aid. Are you referring to hooch? Is that hooch? I don't know. I don't know. Gin and juice. <laughs> no, I feel like I've like been to parties where it's just there it's literally just a any yeah, kind like the cheapest alcohol right, right, with right. just a bunch of Kool Aid in <sighs> it. Mm-hmm. Sure. And that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to have, when I was in college, something we called a scandalous dew, <laughs> which was Mountain Dew and vodka. Oh, God. That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it is. Dew. <laughs> you got to be able to stay awake. <laughs> that's that's uh-huh. right. That's uh-huh. right. Well, you know, then when we got older, it became Red Bull and vodka. Yeah. But, you know, scandalous right. dew did the Class job. it up a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Not um, much. I think it was really funny, too, because these girls are right out of high school. <laughs> and um, when Carson comes back from being intimate with Ew, stop it i hate buzz ravana <laughs> um they're like did you do it and she's like yeah and they're like oh my god and they're like put your feet up <laughs> and it's they so ask cute. her all these questions and stuff like that it's very cute it's very cute yeah. like i i i think that this movie really does preserve that feeling of when you're younger and you're going out and it's just you're you're you have no care in the world except for going out and meeting boys yeah and and that's it and everything about your day is just about what am i going to wear when i go out tonight right to try and meet boys <laughs> to meet boys yes. yes that's the end goal that's the end goal and i i love that yeah it's, I, it was a fun time it's a it's definitely a fun movie i love when carson just like fully decides that she's not, she's kind of finally addresses because it's, she knew it all along yeah. that she didn't want to be married, but she finally like acknowledges it within herself. And she goes, girls, I'm wild. <laughs> <laughs> right. I love that. But even, and it's, but it's in a really cute way. It and is. it's just like, and it's like her wild is basically like progress. Yeah. Like <laughs> for she- women. <laughs> It's great. I'm wild. Right. But yeah, the whole thing was just so super cute. And I, I really enjoyed it. I have to say, 
one of my favorite things about watching this today with you was yeah. that um, your mother-in-law joined us for a little she bit. Did, yes. <laughs> and your mother-in-law so sweet. She just had a big birthday. Uh -huh. So we were celebrating her a little bit. And um, she sits down to watch the movie with us and she goes, Kim, what's this movie? And Kim goes, Shag. And she goes, Sad? <laughs> the movie's called Sad? <laughs> Yeah. And I like that part. Yeah, that was pretty funny. She was also, she was like, well, I'm going to go now because things are getting wild. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's wild. Right. <laughs> okay, it's probably yeah, for the best. Fun. Probably for the best. Yeah. What other parts do we like? Do we miss anything? Well, they do say sweet potatoes a lot. They do. Um, He's a sweet potato. Sweet potato. So many sweet potatoes. And, and they say it's the most fun. They say it's the most fun a lot. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of cute little little things. The beach in these movies, I got to say, the beach does not look fun. There's too many people. And not the cars. Cars on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that part at yeah. all. Um, there's a really good band in the movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> so they have, like, a band that plays at the, you know. Shag club. The shag club where they all go. And it's just a band of that era, if yeah, you could imagine. Like the like, Soul Cruiser kind of band. Yeah, yeah, where you have, like, the singer and then, like, the, the four tops in the background just mm -hmm. doing their Plus dance. Horns. Yeah, everyone's wearing the same suit. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. And everything. <laughs> but they have, a, they have a signature song. Mm -hmm. What's the signature song? 60 Minute Man. To which Kim and I were first like, hmm. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> But then in the song, because we, down. because of the closed captioning, right. <laughs> that for some reason captioned the words to songs, which I don't feel like closed captioning usually does. Yeah. This one was on point. It would tell you like the, the uh, name of the song and the artist. Right. And then it would tell you all the words to the song. If, yeah. Especially if it was, if there wasn't a lot of other dialogue. Yeah. They really told you uh -huh. all the, the words to the song. Yes. So. Yes. So 60, 60 minutes, Minute Man. Break he was it like, down. He was like, I'm the 60 Minute Man. And then people were like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's too much. That's too much. That's too many minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, well, hear me out. Here, listen. It's listen. Gonna, it's going to be. I have a proposal for you. <laughs> it's going to be. 15 minutes. Of kissing. Yeah. 15 minutes of teasing, right? <laughs> 15 minutes of squeezing. Sure. And then what? 15 minutes of blowing my top. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's the 60 minutes. You're done. I'm done. Yeah. 60 minutes. We're done. We're done here. Well, and to which I say, okay, okay. I've heard your proposal. Yeah. That makes sense now. I wasn't in with the 60 minutes at first. Right, right. But now that you've explained it to me. Thank you for breaking that down. I will take it under consideration <laughs> and return to you with an answer very soon. <laughs> <laughs> I did enjoy that very much. I like that idea back in the day where you would have actual bands. Like you said, you love a cover band. I do. And that's kind of what this was, a cover yeah, band. Yeah, it was great. Down the shore cover band. Yeah, it was, it was great. Have and you ever been to Myrtle Beach? No. Have you? No. Why would I? South Carolina? North Carolina. I think the South Carolina. South Carolina. So it's probably warm. People mm -hmm. love Myrtle Beach. There's lots of golfing there. People love the Carolinas. Well, okay. I've never really been. I've driven through them. That's it. Yeah. I don't think I've ever stopped to stay a while in a no. Carolina. Mm -mm. No. No, no. I mean, I've stayed in Virginia. I spent some time okay, in nobody Virginia. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. I've been to Virginia. I've been to Georgia. You're a Luann. You're a bad friend. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm telling you that no one cares what states you've been to. Here we are, 45 minutes later. You're like, number 45. I hate you. I've been to the Ozark Mountains. Well, I've been, been to Maine. I've been there. I've been to Florida 12 times. I've been to... <laughs> All right. And everyone's just like, good All right. God, woman. Good God. I'm unsubscribing from this podcast immediately. Okay. Um, overall, I would say watch this movie. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, ignore the um, – you got to ignore the Confederate flag because um, – But I, I think it – I'm going to say don't ignore the Confederate flag. Okay. I think what you can get from this is when you have people now who are so upset about – taking that Confederate flag away. Uh -huh. You can see in this movie how ingrained in the culture yeah, of the yeah, South yeah. this flag was. Was. Yes. Where it's like, I have a bathing suit that's like, mm -hmm. I don't understand why you don't want this. This is part of my culture and you're taking this away. And it's like a different world down there. Yeah. It's, it's almost like disassociated. Different. But even when they were, when they think they're going to Fort Sumner, the mom's like, yeah, that's where the Civil War started. And they're like, oh, we all know, mom. Right. And it goes back to my initial, the thing I was saying about my roommates, where the first conversation I ever had with them, the Civil War came up. Yeah, they talk about it a lot. 
I know. It's they can't because they lost. I feel like that's okay. what losers do. All right. Let's not piss off the Southerners. Okay. I mean, they did. They did. And I mean, we still love still you guys. still a sore about it. I know. But, but we love you, know. you guys. We The union. We want to be with you guys. We want to be together. We union. We union, is man. <laughs> we in a union. <laughs> okay. And the union is strong. Oh, God. Okay, all right. Stop. Well, would you like to know how this movie connects to my baby boy? <laughs> let's. Yes, I do. <laughs> So, we're back on. Pay attention to me. <laughs> Pay attention to me. <laughs> That's all I ever do. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> um, so, this one is a direct connect. <gasps> I know. Pretty exciting. Can okay. you guess who? No, I have no idea. It's Bridget Fonda. Yay! What were they in together? So, there was some sort of show or possible show or pilot called professional man <laughs> and um or there was an episode called the edge i couldn't figure out what it was called versus what actually got released professional man is it what what year did it come out 1989 also okay and um I'm a professional man <laughs> yeah like that's the song what, that's the song right baby leave me alone i'm a something man professional man i thought it was professional man with uh, hollow notes a family man. Family man. <laughs> okay. I like professional man. Baby, leave me alone. I'm a professional man. I'm like, mm. <laughs> gotta dig deep in my hollow notes. <laughs> I know. Well, you're, you are a professional hollow notes person. <laughs> um, so anyway, Bridget Fonda and Christian Slater were in it. He was like some sort of gangster and she was his wife. Um, and I just looked up the, like about the show or whatever, but it was listed, you know, it tells you like the mm-hmm. things that happen in the show. Yeah. And it's like nudity, severe, <laughs> severe nudity, <laughs> severe nudity, Ooh. severe profanity, moderate violence and severe frightening and intense scenes. Severe. Do you still watch it? I don't know. Do you think you get some, some nude Slater? <laughs> <laughs> Don't die. I'm good. <laughs> well, you can just go find that show and then let me report back. I will report back if I find the show. I promise you. Okay. Thank you. All thank right. You. So what do we have to tell the people? Um, we have to thank the people. Yeah. Thanks guys. Thank you guys. It's Thanksgiving. It's <laughs> November is, uh, gratitude month, gratitude month. So, you know, I'm going to say my gratitude to all the people who listen to this show okay. and who support us. I'm going to say my gratitude to you. <laughs> To me? Yeah. Because you're my best friend, Luann. Oh, I'm, I'm not Luann, but okay. I'll be your best friend forever. Oh. I'm great. I'm gratitude to you, too. <laughs> <laughs> so much gratitude. Uh-huh. All um, right. But yeah, but they should also find us on the TikTok, find us yeah. on the um, you guys, Instagram. You guys know what to do. Do all the things. But um, we really love you guys. And you should also go to our store and buy your friends and family some Confidently Controversial merch yeah for christmas what a lovely christmas present that's a lovely christmas present order now you'll have it in time for the holidays sure. we'll make sure of it we'll make sure of it yeah all right what else um i think what i want to tell people uh-huh. is that if you have the opportunity to be in the miss what is it sunshine pageant okay you should do it okay you should enter that contest yeah. boldly uh-huh proudly beautifully beautifully uh-huh wear your bikini yes but uh-huh. Do not be controversial and dance with a Confederate flag. Yeah, don't do that, guys. Don't do that. It's not necessary. It's not necessarily. You should never dance with any kind of country's flag. I was going to say never dance with a flag, but as you know, part of my profession <laughs> was flag dancing. I know. I was going to say, you, you like to dance with a flag. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be real here. But yeah, I, I, 100%. Just don't. Just don't. Yeah. Just put it on a pole. Yeah. And No, don't have it anymore. Okay. People don't like it. No, I was just saying flags in general, but not oh, that flag. Okay. Confederate flag, no. All right. Well, guys, we love you. Have yeah. a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye. Confidently. Confidently. Controversial. Controversial.